when the AP releases their preseason top 25 poll in a few weeks, there is no doubt in my mind that Texas A&M will be a preseason top 10 team. In fact, I would not be surprised if they were close to that top five. And out of all the teams that I anticipate are going to be in the preseason top 10, I don't know if there is a team that faces more questions going into the year than these Aggies. Because there were lots of key moments in this offseason that really stuck out to me. The first one is that Zach Calzada announced that he is going to be entering his name in the transfer portal. He ends up transferring to Auburn, which leads to A&M acquiring Max Johnson, the LSU quarterback from the transfer portal. Then defensive coordinator Mike Elko leaves to take the Duke head coaching job. And they bring in DJ Durkin, which I will get to DJ Durkin in a little bit. Then National Signing Day. They sign the best recruiting class of all time. And there is going to be a lot of pressure on this recruiting class and on Jimbo Fisher as well and this team as a whole. Because if you're going to sign a recruiting class that historically talented, the best one of all time, you better get at least one national championship because there is pressure on this recruiting class to get this program to the next step. And we're talking competing for the championship year in and year out. And getting to the, at least in the New Year's Six consistently at the very least. And the problem with this 2022 season for A&M is I don't think they're going to be as good as a lot of people are thinking and expecting. For starters, the defensive line is going to be inexperienced. It's going to be led by Walter Nolan and Shemar Stewart. However, the positives, the secondary is experienced. They may have lost Mike Elko, but these Aggies had one of the best defenses in all of college football last season. And they're bringing in DJ Durkin, who I believe is going to be able to bring the intensity and the passion and the discipline and that hunger to have the AM defense be potentially a top five defense in, in the entire country. On the offensive side of the ball, Devon A. Chain returns. And Devon A. Chain is going to be the RB1 this season for the Aggies, as he was the RB2 last year behind Isaiah Spiller. But I will admit that I'm extremely surprised that A. Chain didn't play as much, considering that he was the better running back out of him and Spiller last year. Is Spiller only averaged about five and a half yards per carry last season, while A-Chain averaged seven yards a carry. The offensive line is a little bit more experienced than last year, but they're not experienced like the 2020 offensive line. But I unfortunately have to address the news that really shocked the not only the a&M fan base, but college football as a whole. Star receiver Anaya Smith was placed under arrest yesterday. And I'm not going to get into it too much. So you can just look up what it was if you don't know about it. I'm not going to talk about something like that on here. But, you know, hopefully things work out for the best or whatever happens, whether if it's, you know, an indefinite suspension or if he gets kicked off the team hopefully it's for the best and it's what's best for the team not only this season but maybe even moving forward or maybe not moving forward as much as Anaya Smith is a senior but maybe they make an example out of Anaya Smith and 
you know, they encourage discipline and, you know, just, you know, just being on your best behavior off the field. Just stuff like that. I do want to get into the quarterback battle, though. And the quarterback battle is between Max Johnson and Haynes King. And Connor Wigman, I think, has a small part in this quarterback battle. But I do think that they are going to redshirt Connor Wigman. In fact, I will be shocked if they don't. And luckily, with the redshirt rule that they implemented, I believe it was about three years ago, that any redshirted player can appear in four games without having to burn the red shirt. So who knows? They start off the season against Sam Houston State. Maybe we could see Wigman take some reps or towards the end of the year against Massachusetts or maybe in week two against Appalachian State. And the possibilities are endless. So... Essentially, I do think this quarterback battle comes down to Max Johnson and Haynes King. And the thing is, each of these guys, they bring one thing to the table that the other can't. For Max Johnson, what he brings to the table that Haynes King can't bring to the table is experience. With him being under center for LSU last season, the fact that he has experience in SEC play where Haynes King does not that's a huge benefit for this team this upcoming season. What Haynes King can bring to the table that Max Johnson can't is speed. And I think Haynes King is a bit more an athletic quarterback. He has more athleticism, in my opinion, than Max Johnson does. So it depends on what this coaching staff thinks is the best for the team overall. I mean, do you want experience or do you want somebody that can provide some speed and better athleticism? I think if you ask me, I think it's best to go with the experience, which is Max Johnson. In fact, I think QB1 for A&M, I think it's a 75% chance it's Max Johnson, 25% Haynes King. However, I have talked to a few A&M fans and... They all say that they would prefer Haynes King to be QB1. You know, I don't blame them, but Haynes King just doesn't have the experience compared to Max Johnson. But it is time for what you're all waiting for, and that is my season predictions. This is what the 2022 Texas A&M football schedule looks like. September 3rd, they open up their season in Sam Houston State. The next week, September 10th, they host Appalachian State. In week three on September the 17th, they host Miami in a big showdown. That is one of the big games of the week that week. It's going to be a good one. September 24th, week four, they go down to Jerry World in Cowboy Stadium to take on Arkansas in Arlington. October 1st, their first road game of the season against Mississippi State. A tough place to play. One of the toughest places to play that I don't think anybody really talks about that much. The fans playing cowbells the entire game. Harassive to offenses. And harassive to defenses that allow the chains to move. October 8th is the showdown that college football fans are waiting for Alabama in Tuscaloosa Jimbo Fisher and Nick Saban's rivalry continues as they each had some words for each other throughout this offseason and then after a bye week they go on the road to take on South Carolina as A&M is 8-0 all time against the Gamecocks the 29th of October, they are back in College Station to, t- to host Old Miss. And now this is the crunch time in the college football season. The month of November. November 5th, they host Florida. November 12th, 
They go on the road to Jordan here to take on Auburn and potentially former A&M quarterback Zach Calzada. He is in the quarterback race for the Auburn Tigers. November 19th, they host Massachusetts in a game that should be an easy win. And their final game of the regular season, they host LSU with new head coach Brian Kelly. So this schedule does seem pretty favorable for the Aggies this season. At least on paper and a lot of circumstances. Now I look at this schedule and I see easy wins out of, of course, Sam Houston State, UMass, Appalachian State, South Carolina. I would say that Auburn, I, it depends on who wins the quarterback battle for Auburn. I think Florida should be a win. I'm leaning towards Miami being a win. Old Miss, I'm not sure what to expect out of them as they have a new quarterback as Matt Corral declared for the NFL draft. So I'm going to get to the ceiling versus the floor to conclude the video. So my ceiling versus the floor. The ceiling for A&M is what people are kind of anticipating. The 10 and 2 or 11 and 1 with the one loss being to likely Alabama on the road, which 10 and 2, 11 and 1, that's good enough for a New Year's six bid. And the floor ultimately for me is 8 and 4, 7 and 5, what AM is used to having by the end of the season. My two early to call games, now these might be surprising, but. Arkansas in Cowboy Stadium, at Mississippi State, at Alabama, home game against Ole Miss in Florida. I also thought that Miami would be a too early to call game, but I'm leading towards that being a win in A&M's favor. And I would truthfully lean towards Arkansas and Mississippi State being wins. Mississippi said, I think that could be close. Now, they may have lost to Arkansas last season by a score of 20 to 10, but the defense, they held their own throughout most of the game, especially in the second half. It's just the offense, they just couldn't get going. And if AM's offense can get going through the early part of the year, they have what it takes to reach that ceiling of 10 and 2, 11 and 1. But I'm leaning towards it more being the floor of 8-4 and four and 7-5 and five due to how difficult it really is in the SEC conference. Do I think they have that potential to get a New Year's Six bid? Of course, that's what the ceiling is. But I just think this team just has so much expectations going into the year that I don't know if it's necessarily possible to have that good of a record. But then again, you never know. So comment your record prediction for Texas A&M football and like, share, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, have a wonderful day.